And we start tonight with uh, sentiments and uh, strong opinions from the head of state. President Uhuru Kenyatta has been rather quiet since the Court of Appeal affirmed the decision of the High Court to declare the BBI Constitutional Amendment 2020 uh, bill illegal. This evening, the president broke his silence. He invited the editorial directors of the main media houses to share his feelings on Deputy President William Ruto as well and the BBI judgment, among other critical national issues. But we start on his response on the BBI, BBI appeal judgment. And it is most unfortunate, like I keep saying, that people have forgotten why we were looking at this. And for short-term political gain, have decided to deny Kenyans of what is legitimately in their interest. Because let me ask, one of the things that we used to talk about and we used to say, when you have a situation, if you go into our informal settlements and you go into a lot of these other areas, why do you have such tension? Why do you have such poverty? Then you get and you find out. Because it is both about representation, but it is also about resources. Because when we introduce CDF, CDF we are also attached to the constituency. So when you have an honorable member of parliament receiving 100 million shillings and another one receiving 100 million shillings, one is distributing 100 million shillings to 50,000 people. Another is distributing 100 million shillings to 1 million people. Is that equity? Is that child in Madare or Kibera? Will he ever have an opportunity ever of going to university if the highest bursary he can ever receive is 5,000 shillings? And we said, if we don't deal with some of these issues, people will consistently feel pent up. And that is why we said, let us actually focus ourselves on this. Let us do it. It was not about who was going to be president, who was not going to be president. How many times have I told you people, I am very grateful to the almighty God and the people of Kenya for the opportunity they've given me. I am more than happy to serve out my time and finish my program. But I also believe that this is part of my agenda, to be able to bring people together and to be able to ensure that we have a peaceful, stable, united country. And that is why I was very keen on this. Unfortunately, the courts have ruled the way they have ruled, and I believe that uh, they have been highly misguided in that process. Unfortunately, we have had politicians, like I'm saying, for short-term political gains, who have deviated from why we wanted the BBI to it being an issue of competition. And I don't know why, because all of these people, I mean, they, they, I was hearing some people say, I see this BBI is to propel Ryan Odinga. Ryan Odinga declared his presidency with or without BBI, and he's still on the ticket. BBI has nothing to do with his candidacy. BBI has nothing to do with Uhuru wanting to continue because there is no clause in BBI that says that the incumbent president is going to continue for another 10 years. There is no clause. This is all propaganda and hype that is built around to poison the people's minds and to deviate them from looking at the real facts. Because at the end of the day, who are the people who suffer when we have these political problems? It is not the elite, it is the masses. Who are the people who are denied resources when we don't deal with these issues of inequity? It is the people, not the elite. But somehow now, you will now want to blame poverty on that class as opposed to that class. Instead of dealing with the fundamental root cause of the problem, which is providing resources, giving opportunities to every Kenyan equally and fairly, you want to now make it an us versus them because it's an easy campaign platform, right? To propel an individual to victory as opposed to dealing with the underlying problem facing a nation. So, ladies and gentlemen, all I can say is it is unfortunate. Uh, I am a person who has always respected the rule of law. I always told you, and even when they said, uh, Uko, that we are going to take, I said when I was uh, vying for my very first time, that regardless of whether I'm chosen by or elected or not elected, 
I will still obey the uh, International Criminal Court. I don't speak what I don't mean. You have seen, I proved myself. I was elected and I still appeared because I believe in the rule of law. When they went out and they said my election was null and void, I accepted, moved on. And even this one, I will accept and move on. I don't agree with it because I believe we have denied Kenyans their resources. We have denied Kenyans equity. We have denied funds to go machinani through the ward fund, which to me is actually a much more equitable way of ensuring mtoto wa machinani ameweza kupata elimu ya university kuliko CDF. All right? So this is what Kenyans have lost. I, Uhuru, have not lost anything. Just the, 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 the feeling of, 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 of sadness that we could actually, for political reasons, deny our own people something that would have not only improved their lives and livelihoods, but made Kenya that much more a cohesive society. So um, in terms of uh, where do we go from here? Well, I'm not the only proponent of uh, these changes. I will not give up. I always believe that uh, one must fight for those things that he believes in, whether in office or out of office. I will continue to fight and advocate for those things that I believe in. And I believe strongly that as a country, we need to be fair. I need believe we need to be able to shed this ethnic umbrella that we always say that so and so, because at the end of the day, we're all Kenyans and we need each other. Your child and your child and your child needs an education, needs access to health, needs good roads, just like any other child in any other part of the world. You're entitled to it. And it is my hope and my prayer that like-minded people who believe in these fundamental principles and who believe and see Kenya long into the future and not within the context of their political life, yeah, will continue to advocate for these things until we have a much more fairer and much more just society. So as of now, like I said, that is where we are. We have a ruling, we obey, and we move on and we continue to consult with people who think the same as we do. And we will continue to work together to see that we overcome these challenges and uh, get the Kenya that we want to, to see, that we want our children to inherit. It is not my duty, nor is it my responsibility to tell people or to tell Kenyans how or where they should vote. But it is my duty to remind Kenyans that they need to look at who they vote for and why they are voting for that particular person. And like I'm saying, it is unfortunate that within and amongst us, there are those who will sacrifice interest over personal political agendas. And I believe these are the things that Kenyans need to look for. But at the end of the day, it is not for me to dictate to Kenyans who to elect. It is for Kenyans to decide what is in their best interest. And my hope and my prayer is that they would do that in a manner that looks after, not their short-term interests, but their long-term survivability as citizens and the long-term stability of our nation.